he did say after losing um, that there's a difference in how much the teams above are spending compared to he has had to spend. Well, when when you look, I think um, he's probably on par stroke with, with spending with other teams. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you look at the top side, the top six, that's a different league. And um, they spent, uh, what was it, 10 million on Crouch, which is quite quite a large number. Well, if you just said to the Stoke fans five years ago, we're going to sign Peter Crouch, you'd have gone, that never yeah, happened, um, we're playing the Premier League. So, yeah, he's, he's, and these are the same fans who might be moaning now. Yeah, he's an international player and, yeah. and scoring at that level one and two again at international level. But for me, it's the, it's the wide areas where I haven't really supplied him because he does rely on supply him and that's that's the main focus for, for me where I would be looking now for the remainder of the season. Uh, no one would believe this if I told them, but uh, you were in the 1972 League Cup winning team. I don't know how, because it's your son. <laughs> 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 um, but, um, how do you think the Stoke team of then compares to the Stoke teams now, dynamics-wise or you know, um, character-wise? Well, I think... Uh, it's changed quite considerably really over the years. I mean, when we played, there was no rules. <laughs> <laughs> Very little rules. Yeah. And um, uh, everybody got away with it, anything they could at any time in the match. There was no cameras, uh, officials, there was just the three of them. And uh, there's none, none of this sort of people watching from the, the stands with the TV cameras and all this on you and the FA looking at you and, and all this business. So that, that has changed dramatically, probably for the better because some of the uh, challenges were ruthless and, and believe me it was, it was war yeah. before you even started to play football yeah. and that's how it was every match, you knew who was the, the bad ones, who were the ones you got to watch, the uh, the good guys who they were hard but were fair, yeah. but there were some who were really ruthless. I can imagine, we watched um, a clip of Leeds and plays like Norman Hunter mm. you were playing against and you scored in that game yeah. um, a cracking goal. And um, Lucas, who's in the studio with us now uh, on work experience, was mentioning how difficult it was to be playing on the pitches in them days. Yeah, the pitches were very heavy, training pitches were very heavy. Um, we played in all weathers, very rarely had matches called off. Um, the studs we had had uh, nails in them, which you, you filed them down to the nail. Uh, there was leather, leather studs and uh, you, you filed them down to the nail, so in, in icy pitches you could play on them. And that's how it was, anything went. Yeah. But um, the pitches are definitely, now you look at them, they're like snooker tables. And if you can't control a ball or pass the ball in one touch or make a cross on the run with one touch, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Um, we used to do it in our day on, on muddy pitches and icy pitches. And even in deep snow we used to play. I used to love watching the orange ball. You never see that now because of health and safety. And <laughs> people get into the ground. If, if there's a little bit of snow, everything's called off now. But the orange ball came out. It was like a big thing in a football match, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was different, entirely different. Yeah. Um, and that's why probably now they say the, the pace of the game is quicker. But when you look at teams like Barcelona and AC Milan and Bayern Munich, they quicken the game and slow it down as well. So in that sense... The only thing changes when they say it's quicker is the ball, the pass back to the goalkeeper when he's under pressure. He can't pick it up now. Mm -hmm. They could then in them days and he has to kick it. So it can be one end to the other in a matter of a couple of seconds. Yeah. yeah. And that's why officials probably have a good laugh at him before every match watching him warming up. So <laughs> <laughs> it's quite comical watching someone. <laughs> it's fair to say you got sent off one or two times in your career. Oh. <laughs> you wouldn't survive against the, the refs and the officials now, would you? Well, you'd have to adapt, and uh, yeah. you did in certain matches. You had to adapt uh, because you knew certain players. Again, you had to watch, and uh, you, you were quite um, what would you say, uh, cagey, and, and how you dealt with certain ones. And uh, <laughs> you had to look where the referee was looking and the <laughs> and such like. Yeah. But I remember Joe Jordan when I was at Everton uh, knocking Mike Lines out. We were just coming out of the penalty area, and he was at the side of me. And, Next thing, Mike was on the floor. He, he just got one on the chin from Joe Jordan, and that was it—a left hook. Yeah, he was a handsome guy, Joe Jordan, with the teeth missing. That was right, <laughs> and that's how it was. And you had to watch yourself all the way through every second of the match. Yeah, of course, he went on to manage Stoke, didn't he, Joe Jordan? Yeah, he's been around a few clubs. He's with uh, QPR now, with Harry Redknapp, the assistant manager there, and doing a lot of the coaching there. Yeah. So, uh, 
We, used to. We're going to go to an ad break now and play a quick song, and then we're going to be back. We've got some more questions for you. Lucas is going to ask a couple of questions, and we're going to get this challenge for you, if he's still okay for that. <laughs> he hasn't run off yet. We'll be back with Mike Pedic after the ads, and this from the Rolling Stones.